Thank you for viewing this presentation on the Technology Acceptance Model, also known as TAM. I am Gina Nixon, a graduate student at Kansas State University, and this presentation is a requirement of AGCOM 844. Today I will provide a brief overview of the Technology Acceptance Model, what it is, when it was introduced, how it has evolved, and how it could possibly be used in the agriculture and agricultural communication industries. The technology acceptance model was developed by Fred Davis in 1986 as part of his PhD program at MIT. The T technology acceptance model was developed specifically for the information systems industry to improve understanding of user acceptance processes and to provide a theoretical basis for a user acceptance testing methodology. The primary goal was to demonstrate system prototypes to potential users and measure their motivations to use the alternative systems. The testing could be done early in information system development when feedback is most important. This in turn could reduce development costs and identify likely user adoption and necessary user support. Davis investigated the major motivational variables that mediate between system characteristics and actual use of computer-based systems by end users. The conceptual framework looked at how system features and capabilities affected a user's motivation or intent to use a system, and to what degree the intent resulted in actual use. The technology acceptance model is founded on the fishbein ajdan theory of reasoned action and theory of planned behavior. These theories indicate that an individual's intention to perform a given behavior is the immediate causal determinant of their overt performance of that behavior, and that their intention is jointly determined by their attitude toward performing the behavior and the perceived social influence of those that are important to them. In summary, an individual will perform an action based on their belief that the action will bring positive consequences or be viewed positively by those that are important to them. Actions may also be perceived to improve one's social status. The technology acceptance model differs from the theory of reasoned action in that Davis theorized that social norms do not directly affect attitude or behavior in relation to system use. Instead, attitude toward using a system is the function of perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. He contended that perceived ease of use will have a causal effect on perceived usefulness. There are two core beliefs that form the technology acceptance model. Perceived usefulness, which is defined as the degree to which an individual believes that using a particular system will enhance his or her job performance, and perceived ease of use, which refers to the degree to which an individual believes that using a particular system will be free of physical and mental effort. Perceived ease of use was hypothesized to have a direct effect on usefulness in that a system that is easier to use would make an individual more productive and more likely to use a system. Studies provide conflicting results in this area in that when it comes to actual use, users place more emphasis on obtaining desired outcomes from a system and will use a less user-friendly system if outcomes are more consistent valid and help them reach their goals or objectives or improve their job performance. The technology acceptance model is a very young theory having been presented first in 1986 as part of Davis's thesis and then confirmed in a study that he and that he performed with some others in 1989. Most references to the technology acceptance method refer to the 1989 study when Davis and others published that behavioral intention is the major determinant of usage behavior. Additionally, that 1989 study found that attitude has less of an effect on behavior than previously thought. In 1991, Matheson compared the technology acceptance model with the theory of planned behavior. This was done by asking students about their intent to use various spreadsheets to complete assignments and how important it was to students to have approval from employers, professors, or other students. Findings were that both models or theories are reliable in predicting behavior from intention. It also fully supported Davis's previous findings 
that reflect and reflected that the technology acceptance model was parsimonious. In 1994, Barkey and Hartwick conducted a study on user participation in information system development. They found that subjective norms played a role in mandatory system use, while usefulness and ease of use were more important for voluntary use or continued use of a mandatory system for an extended period of time. Taylor and Todd, in 1995, compared the theory of planned behavior, the decomposed theory of planned behavior, and the technology acceptance model. Both the technology accept acceptance model and the decomposed theory of planned behavior were found to be parsimonious. They also found that the decomposed theory of planned behavior and the technology accept acceptance model were both sound predictors of intention. They further stated that the decomposed theory of planned per behavior provided a fuller understanding of usage behavior but that the technology acceptance model was preferred if only usage was being evaluated. One key addition of this study was the finding that self-efficacy plays a role in behavioral intentions. In 1997, Geffen and Straub conducted a study on gender differences in the use of email. What they found was that while genders may have different subjective norms and, and perceptions of use and perceptions of ease of use, None of those differences had any different, created any differences in their actual usage of email. In 2000, Venkatesh and Davis added some theor theoretical constructs to the technology acceptance model. The revised model is referred to as TAM2. These constructs included interrelated social influence processes and cognitive instrumental processes. The social, the social influence processes were defined by subjective norms, voluntariness, and image. Subjective norms are a person's perception that most people who are important to them think they should or should not perform a specific behavior. This is important in that individuals may choose to perform behaviors they would not otherwise perform if they fear consequences of not performing the behavior, or if someone important to them thinks they should and they are motivated to comply. Voluntariness simply refers to the extent that potential adopters view the system as non-mandatory. This goes back to previous studies, noting that behavior intentions differ initially when users are mandated to use a system versus being able to make a choice in whether or not to use a system. Image is the degree to which use of an innovation is perceived to enhance one's status in one's social system. In other words, will use of the system make one more acceptable by their peers or superiors, or give them a higher social status? These social const constructs bring in more parts of the theory of reasoned action and the decomposed theory of planned behavior. The cognitive instrumental processes include perceived usefulness, job relevance, output quality, result demonstrability, and perceived ease of use. Venkatesh and Davis argue that individuals form perceived usefulness judgments by cognitively comparing what a system is capable of doing with what they need to get done in their job. Job relevance is defined as how well an individual regards the system as important to their job. People will also take into account how well the system performs tasks and the quality of output. Is the quality high and does it do what they need it to do? In other words, are the results demonstrable or demonstrable? In 2003, Dasgupta, Granger, and McGarry conducted a study to determine if the technology acceptance model could reliably evaluate behavioral intentions and acceptance of an e-collaboration technology. They studied students who were required to use an e-collaboration tool called Prometheus. And they had to use that to work with peers on projects, submit assignments, and communicate with instructors. The group found that previous user experience had an effect on perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. However, increased use did not have a positive effect on system usage. 
it seems students simply learned when and how they needed to access the system and didn't use it any more than they needed to for classes. In 2006, McCoy, Galetta, and King cautioned against using the technology acceptance model across cultures without further research. They used Hofstede's research to define cultures using uncertainty avoidance, power distance, masculinity and femininity, and individualism and collectivism. They found that cultures low in uncertainty avoidance, high in power distance, high in masculinity, and high in collectivism did not follow the previous results of the technology acceptance model principles where it linked behavioral intentions with perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. In summary, usefulness was unaffected by perceived ease of use by those not trying to avoid uncertainty. In the power distance cultures, systems were used simply because individuals were told to use them, so perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use did not affect behavioral intentions. Those cultures high in masculinity tend to believe in their abilities and are less concerned with ease of use as they are in reaching the goals as, as they are in reaching goals, so the perceived ease of use had little to no effect on perceived usefulness and intentions. In collectivism groups or cultures, those folks are not as concerned with the ease of use because they are more concerned with reaching goals that are valued by others and they will use a system that is less user-friendly if those around them are using the system. There are many studies that have been conducted using the technology acceptance model in the past 30 years. They span industries, many industries, including education, healthcare, business, communication, transportation, manufacturing, and others. Each study I reviewed seems to strongly link perceived usefulness with behavioral intentions. There are studies that have conflicting results linking the perceived ease of use to behavioral intentions, but often find that it is a mediated link to perceived usefulness. Some of the most common arguments against the technology acceptance model is that it needs to take into account systems costs and features, social norms, culture, gender, alternative systems, and that it focuses on individual users rather than groups of users. Some of those um, conflicts or, or arguments were addressed with the addition with, with the additional social constructs um, or theoretical constructs that were made to the technology acceptance model to in 2000. It appears that the technology acceptance model is being used in agriculture and extension in Malaysia, Italy, Nigeria, and other countries around the world. However, I was unable to find articles about its use in U.S. agriculture or in agricultural communication specifically. It seems that this model would be very useful in evaluating behavioral intentions to use new agriculture technology and to effectively communicate about available ag technologies using a variety of methods and systems. The technology acceptance model has been well received and utilized by those developing information systems as well as those developing and introducing technologies in other industries. The model is being successfully used to evaluate systems likely adoption and use. In today's world, technology changes rapidly and is being introduced and used in all aspects of our lives. Developers would be wise to use the technology acceptance model during development to increase user adoption and create technology that users will find easy to use while meeting their performance goals and objectives and accommodating social norms. Many end users are more familiar with a variety of technology platforms, likely reducing the importance of the perceived ease of use. Additionally, this model may be helpful in developing acceptance of technology by audiences who are less comfortable with the rapid changes taking place. This page lists all the references used for this presentation. Again, thank you for viewing this presentation, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at gnixon.ksu.edu.